So everything that we can perceive, everything that we can ever experience in life is based in open intelligence. But the thing is that we, most of us really need an education in how to get more acquainted with open intelligence. It's like Or at least I could see that for myself. I wasn't used to identify it. Even though I have read about what open intelligence was or awareness, I didn't really have a, a proper tool to acquaint myself with open intelligence. So for me, it was just an intellectual concept. I really needed something to make it obvious for me over and over again. And most of us lack that education. Maybe how we have heard about what open intelligence is, but we need an introduction. At least I did. I needed a proper in introduction to see what, what is open intelligence. How can I identify it for myself? And as you heard in the talk here, in the Balanced View Training, we have a very simple practice. Something very obvious that we can use and that anyone can use, because everyone can just stop the thinking for a brief moment. Everyone has the capacity to just stop the train of thoughts for a while. <coughs> and what happens when we do that? There is some kind of alertness present, right? There is some kind of cognizance. There is some kind of awareness. There is something that is looking through your eyes. There is a balanced view, you could say. Now, this balanced view or this alertness you can't really find it, can you? Where is it? And you can't say that this alertness is anything. It's just present. It's just a, this deep ability to know. So this is a very powerful introduction that we need at the beginning to just identify and to see what happens when we stop our thinking just for a brief second and see this alertness, to get to know it, to be introduced to it, maybe for the first time in our life. So this is our true nature. And in balance, we call it open intelligence or opening intelligence. Because it is, an, it is an intelligence that is very open, you could say, very alert, vast, like open space. So why, it is, why is it important to recognize this alertness? And how can we tap into it over and over again? In this training, we call that a short moment. And a short moment is to introduce yourself, first of all, and then we just continue with the same practice over and over again, until it becomes continuous one day. So a short moment is, you could say, another word for short moment is openness, to be really open to your own experience, and to see what happens when you are really opened. And also, if you look, look into your experience, we could so clearly see that we don't have so many options to really handle what we are experiencing, do we? So the first option that we have, of course, is that we indulge our experience, and especially if it's painful. We say, for example, that we feel sadness, or we feel jealousy, or grief, or whatever comes up for us. We start to think about that. Why am I feeling grief now? Is it because I was abandoned as a child or what is it? So we focus very intensely on what we call in this training the data, the data streams. And data is just a very simple word that we use in this training to, to make it very simple, a way of explaining or putting another more <coughs> useful label on all experience, thoughts, emotions, sensations, basically everything that we can experience in life. And another thing that we can do to handle our experience, of course, is to just put, put it down. Say, for example, that we don't feel very comfortable with feeling sad or jealous. We just squeeze it down. And another one that I was very skillful at, because I was involved in the positive field of psychology, trying to change my thoughts and emotions. So when sadness was coming up, or even better, when anger was coming up, or hatred, 
I was trying to change that into something else because I deeply thought that anger and hatred couldn't be part of compassion or couldn't be part of this opening intelligence. <coughs> so I started to try to get rid of it. And I did that by trying to change it very subtly in the beginning, but I saw that that was actually what I was trying to do. So when I, w when I was feeling hatred, for example, I said to myself, you are a spiritual person, you shouldn't feel hatred or anger, you should be more compassionate. <coughs> so instead of trying to express my hate or my anger towards anyone, I was actually trying to be nice. I tried to cultivate niceness or whatever. And then we have the four option that is really powerful, and that is to let everything be exactly as it is. And we do that in short moments in the beginning, so it's not, on, so it's not contrived. And what that means is that we just relax and let everything be as it is. We relax the body and mind very deeply. So whenever we experience that we are trying to change anything in life, we just remind ourselves to not go in that way anymore, to not jump, uh, jump on that train, but instead just relax and see what happens when we do that. So that would be like if you really would like to experience the quality or the clarity of the water in a muddy pond, it's not so smart to stir the pond, it's much better to just let it be as it is. And in, the, in this way you start to see that every thought and emotion that you have appear in open intelligence in the same way as the rainbow it appears in space. It's not separate from the space. It's actually something that appears in space. It's a part of space and it goes back to space very naturally. So that was really powerful to me to start to see that all my thoughts and emotions that I was struggling so hard to try to get rid of because I felt they were painful. When I started to apply these short moments, have the openness to really see what happened when I don't struggle so much to try to change them, I could see that there actually was something present in those very painful states that I wasn't aware of because I was trying too hard to change them. So suddenly I started to see that there actually was something inside of me that was totally stable and totally unaffected of those painful states, for example. So that should be the basis of any non-dualistic thinking, to, th to, see, to really deeply experience that nothing has an independent nature. Everything is bound together, everything is really one. So then we will see that all our thoughts and emotions appear in, of, as and through open intelligence. And when we apply this to every situation in our life, for example, when we are facing a big decision in our life, I could start to see for myself that what was very difficult with making decisions was not so much to try to find the right decision, but the worry around it. I started to see that I was trying to find the right solution, and the right solution was always based around me trying to avoid making the wrong decision. <laughs> but how could I know that from the beginning? And it was always based also on the assumption that whatever I was deciding to do or not do, that I couldn't handle that situation. And when you are more at ease with your data and not so afraid of them anymore, then you just suddenly start to see it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much what decision you make because you're, you're so much provided with the ability to handle any situation in life. So then you can start to relax with your decisions, not worry so much. So many times this, the, the thought that there is a very right decision that you have to make, that really makes it complicated for you. So decision making just becomes so much more easy when you relax. And it's also like when you relax more and you tap into the wisdom that we have in open intelligence by not fighting against our data, but actually to see when you bring the 
data and open intelligence together, the coincidence of this both, then you started to see that is the way you tap into the wisdom. And then you suddenly start to see more and more that you actually know what decision to make. And if you don't know, you can just wait and see what happens. So that is a very powerful, and we just see how we make decisions all the time without thinking about them. When I'm sitting up here, for example, should I go in that direction to speak about that, or should I go in that direction? It's just a very natural process. Or should I do it with my right hand, or should I do it with my left hand? <laughs> we are making so many de decisions without even thinking about them. So in one way we could say that the thinking is not really necessary. It's just a very natural process of tapping into this open, open intelligence that is always present. <coughs> So decision-making becomes so much more easy when you are relaxed. And then you can always use the Four Mainstays to tap into someone else that can help you, help you with the decisions. And maybe I also would like to mention a few words about the, the Four Mainstays when, when there are new people here. So if the short moments are not enough, maybe they are coming up very strong emotions for you, for example, and you feel that the short uh, moments are not really providing any relief for you in the beginning, then we need a support system. And the support system in the balanced view training is first of all the short moments. This simple practice of just trying to see what happens when you have this openness to your experience. See what happens when you apply that over and over again. And then we need a trainer. A trainer is actually something that has been has been in the training longer than you and knows more about the practice of short moments. A person that is basically have devoted their life to see what happens when you relax with your data. A person that is basically not so afraid of data anymore because the person has found that everything about data is actually something that points you back to your true nature as open intelligence. So you could say a guide, a person that deeply knows about the nature of data. And then the third is the amazing texts and the, the website where you can find everything that you need. And of course all the texts and all the media, all the downloads, all the talks that we have on the website. It's just a reminder of your true nature again. It's something that evokes open intelligence. So it's nothing about understanding the texts or, or the, the media that is so important. It's more about just evoke the, the deep recognition of open intelligence. And then we have the community. And the community is very powerful because that is people that would basically only remind you of your true nature over and over again. So for me, the community was really powerful. I could see for the first time in my life people that took full responsibility for the data, not acting out. That is one of the very powerful trainings we have in the imbalance to you, and that is called the empowerment, the 12 empowerments. And that is a training that provides a deep investigation about the, the nature of your data and the way you have maybe emphasized certain data in your life. So we basically learn in the empowerment training to not be a victim anymore of our data. So that is a very powerful practice and that's what you see in the community here. You see people that have learned the nature about their data and are not emphasizing them in the same way. So in the community you actually see the practical results of this training. You see people that are able to work in harmony together, that are not emphasizing their data not constant struggle, not constant fights, but actually people that are living this training in a very practical way.